I'd like to welcome Dr. Leela. He will be presenting on new ashwagandha research for stress, uh, sleep, and immune health. So please join me now. I see we're going to get his slides up. Hi, welcome. You are on mute. I am on mute. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm going to turn it over to you now. You can um, get your slides up. And as you're, as you're doing that, I'd love to get our audience's thoughts on a, a quick poll here. And that is how aware are consumers of the connection between sleep and or emotional well-being and immune health? So go ahead and put your answers in there. And, and then we'll, we'll turn it over. All right. Looks like if you just want to move on to presenter mode and you will be good to go. And I'm getting myself there uh, from the beginning. Perfect. Are we there? Uh, you are at the beginning. If you could just put it on presenter mode, that'll give us a nicer view so we can really see those slides. And I am just trying to get myself set up here. So anyway, uh, while I'm getting myself going here, um, I'm Michael Layla. I'm the Chief Science Officer with Nutra Science Innovations. You had a little bit of a, a look at um, the presentation just now uh, in terms of what Nutra Science is all about. And I am trying to get, there we go. And I am ready to go here and I'm on my way. We're going to be talking about uh, the new consumer need, emotional well being, and uh, the use of ashwagandha and the new research that's going on in ashwagandha today. So, uh, emotional well being has uh, obviously in the pandemic era has become the new consumer need um, that incorporates. Uh, various aspects. Uh, we've, we've heard about stress, we've heard about anxiety, sleep, and immune health. And in fact, uh, just yesterday, uh, MBJ uh, had, a, had a report where they talked about the three top consumer needs. Uh, number one was immune stress, uh, immune health. Number two was sleep. And number three was uh, reduced stress and anxiety. In addition, ashwagandha has been uh, used for stress, for anxiety relief for years and years. And these, this is data from 2019. And more recently in August of last year, Nutri Ingredients uh, had a, a little blurb about how uh, during the pandemic, uh, ashwagandha has also become, uh, has increased uh, significantly even from these levels. So let's go in, dive in and talk about ashwagandha itself. So um, ashwagandha is an adaptogen in the little blurb that you heard so earlier from Trust and Transparency Center. Uh, adaptogens uh, are uh, very helpful in reducing stress and anxiety. Um, ashwagandha is obviously a traditional Indian Ayurvedic uh, medicinal, thousands of years of history. The roots have been used for medicinal purposes uh, primarily, but the leaves also for medicinal teas as well. So within ashwagandha, the primary bioactive compounds are the withanolides. And so there are two different uh, groups of withanolides. There are the withanolide glycosides, which are the withanolides with sugar moieties attached to them. And then the A-glycones, and the A-glycones don't have any uh, sugar attached to them. And there are significant bioactive properties that are typically associated with the with analyte glycosides. So, you know, until recently, many of the ashwagandha extracts have contained a few of the with analyte glycosides, but now we've got some newer extracts that contain higher amounts of the with analytes. It's offering more bioavailability, more bioactivity, and uh, a broader spectrum. So here's, here are some examples. Uh, the, in the, on the left-hand side is an HPLC chromatogram. Uh, the 
the chromatograms of the, uh, the, the red and the green and the blue at the bottom here are various uh, ashwagandha products that show uh, various with analyte glycosides present, as you can see, but in relatively low quantities. And here is an example of a, a more recent high uh, uh, efficiency, high bioactive ashwagandha with larger numbers of uh, with analyte glycosides and also higher levels. On the right hand side, we can see the same thing with uh, a different analytical uh, technique, HPTLC. And we can see in lanes one and lanes two, more uh, traditional kinds of ashwagandha products with very little, um, the very, very, uh, uh, the bands are very, very faint. While um, on the third uh, level, you can see the um, a, a significant number of bands that are associated with all these different with analyte glycosides. So now we've got some uh, basis for looking at new ashwagandha type products that have come out in the last few years. And um, with that have been a series of uh, clinical studies that uh, have um, been um, done on these different uh, ashwagandhas with higher, uh, higher bioactives. And we, we see some uh, greater impact. And we'll talk through some of these clinical studies. So stress and anxiety, we all start, ashwagandha starts with stress and anxiety. Um, and, and the big uh, biochemical marker for stress and, re and, and anxiety reduction is cortisol, cortisol reduction. And um, a tradi the traditional benefit of ashwagandha, of course, is stress reduction and cortisol reduction. Uh, Diana Morgan talked about morning cortisol, uh, where um, you get up in the morning and your cortisol levels are, are the highest. And so, um, really uh, a good study would focus on reducing um, a morning cortisol. So there have been a number of uh, uh, um, um, RCT studies, a number of randomized double-blind placebo control type studies in the past. And these are older studies in this first bullet here where you've got um, about uh, 250 milligrams of a 10% extract or 600 milligrams of a 5% extract that have been shown in clinical studies to reduce uh, uh, cortisol. So more recently with, the, uh, with a 35% extract, this is where we have higher, higher um, bioactives present. You, uh, we've also demonstrated uh, a reduction in morning cortisol. This is uh, done in a study that involves a 60 adults, um, 60 day study with tests being done at 15, 30, 45 and 60 days. Um, and not only with cortisol reduction, but also with various scoring techniques like the Hamilton anxiety score and the DAS score, which may, uh, looks at depression and, and anxiety and stress. So what we see with these clinical studies is significant impact on stress and anxiety, both from a perspective of, of, um, re, of uh, scoring that are self-scored by uh, participants, but also by a, um, a biochemical measure, uh, measuring uh, cortisol in the blood. So let's move on to the second area of interest and that's sleep. And not just any sleep, but restorative sleep. And um, I think sometime last year, I, was, I listened to a webinar in June or July, uh, Dr. Tirana Lodog, who has her clinic and is well researched and, and well uh, talks, mentioned exactly this point. She said, it's not just about any sleep, but it's about restorative sleep. So what happens is uh, about 10% of our population tends to experience what's called non-restorative sleep. Um, this is sleep where you don't wake up uh, sufficiently rested, you wake up, um, you wake up unrefreshed, you wake up um, unrestored. And of course the opposite restorative sleep is where you get sufficient sleep, you wake up refreshed and restored, ready to go through the day. And that's an important part of um, where sleep uh, research is going today. So the original focus of sleep, of course, is quantity of sleep. Did I get a good night's sleep? I measure that by, well, I, I got um, seven hours of sleep and, and that's great. Or, oh boy, last night was really tough and I only got three hours of sleep. 
So most consumers do talk about sleep in terms of quantity, but there is of course quality of sleep, which is uh, measured by a number of different parameters. Uh, there are things like uh, onset latency, efficiency, and um, the amount of time wake that you are awake after sleep onset. These are, these are measures of quality of sleep. There's of course the, t the, the quantity of sleep. And then there is the non-restorative sleep, um, which is, uh, did I wake up refreshed and ready to go? So ashwagandha sleep studies, there are a couple of sleep studies with ashwagandha. These are the clinically um, uh, randomized uh, placebo control gold standard uh, type studies. Um, in, 19, uh, in 2019, there was a study with um, a 600 milligrams of a 5% extract showing significant improvements in quality and, and quantity of sleep and quality of life parameters. And so uh, this gave impetus to um, a newer study that just came out last year with a 35% extract, the higher uh, bioactives extract where there were significant improvements in both the quantity and quality of sleep and uh, quality of life parameters. So, so here's a little bit more about that study. It was a six week study um, and measurements of sleep were done weekly uh, by both uh, using a questionnaire type uh, approach uh, as well as using uh, actigraphy, which is um, a, a device that measures uh, time of sleep. So the focus here in this study was on restorative sleep. And um, a key finding of the study was that restorative sleep increased 42% over placebo. So this is where uh, now 42% uh, of the participants uh, demonstrated an increase in their restored, restorative sleep. In other words, they're waking up fresh, they're ready to go. In addition, um, the study also looked at the, the um, quantity of sleep, um, showing a significant increase in quantity of sleep using ashwagandha and also different measures of quality of sleep. And so um, here are some of the factors uh, that were um, examined and showed uh, significant improvements. And then uh, there's also quality of life parameters as measured by a quality of life score that uh, were improved um, energy level, mood, mental alertness, all were uh, measured to be improved. So again, ashwagandha through good quality clinical studies shows that it can affect restorative sleep as well as other aspects of sleep. Now let's take it over to immune health. So immune health, as we all we talked about just now, has become um, an important part of general health and wellness. Um, and in fact, as I mentioned earlier, consumers are looking at immune health as now um, a, a not, not just an important part of general health and wellness, but a necessary component of emotional well-being. So when I'm stressed and when I don't get enough sleep, my um, my immune health decreases. And so I recognize as a consumer that I want to improve my immune health at the same time as, and it's all part and parcel of uh, emotional well-being. So for the first time, uh, a, a randomized controlled study has been done on uh, an ashwagandha extract. This is a 35% uh, bioactives extract at a relatively low dose of only 60 milligrams. Um, and this was uh, actually a study that was done in two phases. The first phase was a, a randomized controlled study, 24 healthy volunteers, either given placebo or the active uh, material. And it was a 30 day study. And um, at the end of the study, um, blood samples were taken and a whole slew of, um, of immune parameters were measured um, in terms of uh, going from lymphocytes to cytokines to antibodies. So a, a large number, there were probably about two dozen, three dozen um, parameters that were measured. Um, and here, uh, and, and that was in the phase, the first phase of the study. Then in the second phase of the study, it was open label. In other words, um, the 
The researchers then were coded, uh, open coding as to who got the placebo and who got the uh, ashwagandha active. And then what they did was they um, continued the study giving everybody the active um, ashwagandha product. So the placebo group then got converted over to taking the ashwagandha product and the ashwagandha group continued to take the ashwagandha product. Kind of a unique, interesting um, twist on a, um, a post uh, 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 randomized control study. And um, I'm just showing the results here right now, uh, just one set of results for um, the, the first phase, which is the, the uh, randomized controlled study part where um, there were about 24, 25 participants um, and uh, uh, there was significant, uh, there was significant clinically significant activation of the innate, both the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system, uh, which um, by various parameters and here are some examples of them. Um, and uh, there was, uh, even though uh, we're talking about significant activation, what we're talking about when we say significance is clinical significance and statistical significance, but there was no overactivation. In other words, there was no cytokine storm type effect uh, from ashwagandha. Ashwagandha tends to be very mild and its impact uh, is gentle, uh, but significant. The, the, the study on immune health um, is uh, going through a peer review process. It's been submitted for um, publication. That's why I can't give you all the results at this point, but it, just to say that there was significant activation of both the in, innate immune system, which is your primary immune system that is always there, and then the adaptive immune system, which, um, it, which is it, which goes into effect when um, there is a challenge that occurs um, uh, during an um, event such as um, um, a, a virus or, or other kind of event. So some closing thoughts on what we've seen here. Um, the ashw ashwagandha is a great adaptogen um, supporting emotional well-being. And emotion in traditionally uh, ashwagandha has been focused on stress, anxiety, and restfulness. Uh, now that we've extended it over the last couple of years to sleep and now most very recently to immune health. And so now we've got the full spectrum of emotional well-being covered by this just one adaptogen. So what, it, what uh, the, re the new research is pointing out is that now with some newer high potency ashwagandha extracts, we've got high levels of bioactives, which are, uh, uh, can be measured um, uh, easily and uh, transparently. Um, we see cortisol reduction, which leads to improved stress and anxiety and restfulness. We see improved sleep as measured both uh, quantitatively, qualitatively, and by restorative sleep where we wake up refreshed, ready to go. And then finally, most recently, um, some benefits in immune support where we're seeing activation of the innate system, which keeps us um, under balance and ready for uh, any kind of environmental threat um, on an ongoing basis. And then adapt, also activates the adaptive immune system, which is when there is a challenge that is uh, presented to us. So the, this really opens up a whole bunch of new opportunities for um, ashwagandha in the marketplace. Consumers are already familiar with ashwagandha. It's, um, uh, you know, after hemp and CBDs, obviously it's the largest growth herb. Um, natural consumers are well aware of the traditional benefits of ashwagandha, uh, the Ayurvedic um, um, uses of ashwagandha. And, uh, but we're seeing today that um, there's more and more mainstream interest in ashwagandha. Um, the powder, powdered ashwagandha products and even extracts um, are now being sold uh, in mainstream stores. Now, higher potency, uh, as we go to develop uh, newer and newer varieties, uh, newer and newer 
uh, extracts. Uh, higher potency means higher bioactives, which means lower doses, which again means more opportunity for combination products and for brands able to then create some uniqueness in their uh, offerings. And um, all which is most important is to be able to help meet consumer demand uh, for emotional products in this, um, especially um, in this pandemic period. But uh, I think there's uh, a general sense that there's been a step change now in the use of um, or the interest in emotional well-being and the use and, and specifically the use of ashwagandha extracts. And so I think we'll see um, a step change uh, that uh, continues on um, over the next few years for sure. So I, in this uh, presentation, I've got my uh, references and um, uh, if, you, if you need to contact me, um, my email address is here. Thank you very much and I'll pass it back to you, Maggie. Excellent, thank you so much. We do have a lot of questions coming in. So as a reminder, please submit your questions in our Q&A panel and we're going to start getting to them now. And uh, just another special thank you to champion sponsor NutriScience for helping us deliver this information to you all. So our first question here we have uh, from John, what other botanicals fruits have with andinols? And he said he read that golden berries have this property. So there are a few um, uh, fruits and vegetables uh, and, and botanicals that do have small amounts of withanolites. However, um, and, and some of them are the nightshade uh, type uh, vegetables uh, in particular. Uh, however, there is no comparison. Ashwagandha by far has significantly more withanolites than any other um, than any other uh, botanical. In fact, um, Somnifera um, uh, is the uh, Latin name for, um, for ashwagandha and um, Somnifera is, has got to do with sleep, right? So uh, that's where it comes from. All right, we have a question here. How long does it usually take before you feel the effects from ashwagandha? So ashwagandha is one of those gentle herbs that tends to take about a week, taking one dose every day to begin for you to begin to feel those effects. So it's not an immediate uh, type of effect like uh, perhaps um, um, uh, some of the psychedelic uh, products uh, might have, but uh, certainly it's not a lot. It's not a long term type of product uh, takes a very long term, such as, um, uh, for example, uh, some of the joint uh, support products take a very long time to have an effect. So it's well within the ability of a consumer to wait it out as it begins to um, uh, circulate in the system. Another question on, on taking ashwagandha, uh, we're asked in the morning before food, Recommendations on when to take. So in um, in these studies, um, most of the, st the studies that uh, that I uh, talked about, they're typically taken about an hour before bedtime. So that helps with the uh, sleep aspect of uh, ashwagandha. Um, and so typically, um, a, it doesn't really matter. Um, it, it, the extracts are water soluble. Um, so it doesn't really matter whether you take it uh, before food, with food, or after food. Um, about an hour before bedtime is, is, a, is uh, where these clinical studies have, um, have, uh, have been um, uh, run. So follow-up question to that, actually, and I suppose this is, uh, as we were mentioned earlier about helping the healthcare practitioners who also are in need of these, somebody asked, uh, how would night shift workers take ashwagandha? So their uh, uh, cessadian uh, rhythm will be different, will be the opposite. So I would then look at taking it in the morning about an hour before their bedtime. So if they're just coming off work, for example, and then intend to go home and take a nap, uh, right leaving work would be the best time to take uh, ashwagandha. Okay, another question here. Are there common contraindications with conditions or pharmaceuticals that 
uh, need practitioner sign off. Um, there have we've looked at um, a number of different um, studies to see whether uh, there have been any um, um, co uh, coexisting or comorbidity type of um, situations. We haven't found any. Um, I've been looking in the FDA or the CDC and the CDC uh, serious events uh, reporting databases, and I found nothing on ashwagandha at all. So I, I think that um, it really tends to be very gentle and um, it, and that's, again, consistent with um, uh, the way that it works. We were asked specifically, is this a branded ingredient, the 35% extract at 60 milligram recommended dose, uh, is this a branded ingredient from NutriScience? Uh, yes, it is. Excellent. Uh, so in terms of using such an ingredient, we were asked by Lynn, do you think we will start to see ashwagandha move out of the primary supplements into functional foods and beverages? So I think we will see this, but carefully. And the reason for carefully is that ashwagandha is astringent. Um, it, it, it does have a, a, a sharp taste to it. However, um, the quantities, now that, that we're getting to higher bioactives, we can use lower quantities. And down in these lower quantities, uh, I think it will be easy to put into bars or, or beverages. Um, and we're seeing some of that now begin to um, permeate into the marketplace. So yes. Excellent. I know you were focusing on on some of the science on sleep and stress, but we were also asked, how is ashwagandha useful for energy? I see that it is also promoted that way. So um, there have been some studies um, done on energy and uh, uh, increasing energy and for sports nutrition. Um, we haven't seen any studies recently in those areas. Uh, but the older studies are there, and so it is. Uh, it would be considered uh, a good um, addition to an energy formula. Okay, right, we're getting so many questions in, so keep them coming. We do have a couple more minutes. Uh, we were asked, is ashwagandha suitable for pregnant women and also for those with digestive issues, given that it's part of the nightshade family? So, um, as with most... Uh, herbs and botanicals, um, they're not, they have not been really tested uh, in pregnant women. Um, the only comment I can make there is that, uh, you know, the traditional use of ashwagandha in Ayurvedic medicine uh, would suggest that, um, that there, there wouldn't be problems, but I really don't have any data to support that as far as uh, pregnancy is concerned. And then the other part of the question was on uh, digest, digestion. Mm -hmm. um, ashwagandha is extremely gentle. Um, the only the only thing is the the astringency when you if you were to take it um, just as a powder, for example, in the in the by mouth. But after that, in the body, um, I've not heard of any issues. And again, I have been looking for uh, such types of um, um, side effects and have not seen any. Hey, uh, a question specifically about the branded ingredient. Why no black pepper in your product? So black pepper is typically used to enhance the bioavailability of bioactive ingredients in general. Um, and uh, uh, ashwagandha, the ashwagandha extract, the high um, uh, bioactive content uh, extract already has high levels of the bioactives. It's, it's, it's extremely water soluble um, so that uh, that doesn't become an issue. All right, great. We, we are getting so many questions for you and we are just about out of time. So I do want to remind everybody that, um, you know, we have the email there that you can, you can reach out to Dr. Leela and there's information on naturallyinformed.net from NutriScience. Also, there will be a round table on a different topic, but uh, everybody <laughs> wants to talk to you. So the round table is taking place at 1.45 today, and that's on L-theanine and mood and cognitive health research and claims. So I uh, invite everybody, if you haven't signed up for the round table, to please go ahead and do that. And with just a few seconds left, let's look at our poll results, because we didn't get a chance to see how people weighed in on that. Can we, can we pull those up, team? See what we got. I think they're getting those ready for us to see. 
Here we go. Uh, how aware are consumers of the connection between sleep and emotional well-being and immune health? Vary, 55%, somewhat 45%. So, so they're aware, they're in need, and the opportunity is there. So thank you very much. And now we are going to 